Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, April 2nd. So we are having the moon move out of that Aries energy that brought us this beautiful beginning, this fresh start, this clean slate with the new moon in Aries just yesterday. Although the moon is shifting out of Aries energy and into Tauran energy, we are still very much in the new moon energy window. This particular shift, regardless of whether it was a new moon event or not, any time that we're moving out of Aries energy, that is very much fire, very igniting, very renewing, very direct, very fired up in all the right and sometimes wrong ways. Anytime we move out of that energy and we move into Taurus energy, we kind of feel like we hit a brick wall because this Tauran energy is earth energy. We have to come back down to earth. Many of us spent the last couple of days in the higher realms of our vision, of our dreams, of our imagination for good reason. We had a new moon that we had to manifest under, but now it's almost like we get smacked down from those higher realms and we have to be very present in our physical form, in our earth body, in our physical circumstances. And for many of us, it doesn't feel so good. However, there is a cyclic nature to the astrological signs and the energy that they give off. And it is very necessary for us to fly high and then be grounded into recognizing what, what it is that we're actually going to do. So the Tauran energy ruling over our physical body and our physical circumstances and our earthly selves is about where it is that we can recognize in our day-to-day -day life, in our routines, in our relationships, in our money matters, where it is that we have control over bringing new elements to life. Because of course, we're in a brand new calendar. We're under this new moon influence. This is a time to give birth, to create new elements in our lives. And this Tauran energy is ruled over by Venus. And of course, Venus is the goddess of love and beauty and worth and pleasure and joy and happiness and money. And she is the portal between the higher realms and this physical realm of how it is that we actually give birth to the elements here in our physical realm based off of the ideas, the inspiration that our higher selves have definitely been channeling in and working on bringing into our physical worlds. So the moon moves out of Aries energy, begins its void of course uh, pathway around 8.52 a.m. And we'll be locking into Tauran energy around 11.51 a.m. And again, Eastern Standard Time. So as you can kind of suspect, the earlier part of the morning is going to be a little bit shaky. Anytime that the moon is void of course, things are unstable, we're uncertain, you know, we're shifting from one energy to the next. Many of us get dizzy or sleepy or nauseous at this particular time. Again, it's a good idea to check into the ascension symptoms for the week to validate for you that, you know what, you're not sick. You're not coming down with something. It's just the energy shifting. Keep in mind, we've had very severe solar winds, solar flares, CMEs, lots of cosmic radiation coming into our Earth's atmosphere over the last couple of days. Um, the Schumann resonance has been just, you know, lit up like a Christmas tree. And when those huge energy influxes come in, we are feeling it in our physical form. So we can expect that midday-ish, once the moon kind of lands in that Tauran energy, we're really going to feel a lot lower, a lot slower, a lot heavier, a lot weighted especially compared to the last couple of days of energy. This particular energy really has us focused on taking care of our physical selves. Again, with the ascension symptoms coming in, that's just indicating where the energy blockages are in your physical form. So it's up to you to use all the different, you know, modalities of energy healing and massage and herbs and crystals and, and healing vibrations in order to actually move the energy through your physical form. You do have a huge part in this. And if you've been suffering with the same kind of ascension symptoms for a long period of time, that's on you. You haven't done the work to move the energy. You haven't done the work to examine the blockages and to do the work to get that channel free and clear for it to move on and manifest in other areas of the body where 
you know, your attention is definitely needed. So we're all going to get a little tough love life lesson on where the energy blockages are in our physical form in our physical body. um, While the moon is very rooted in this earth energy. So there are eight different aspects here today, and four of them involve the moon. So half of the day is kind of moon ruled. The other half is actually ruled by Mercury, Mercury and the sun, to be honest. So the sun, you know, is our ego, is our identity, what it is that we need a full illumination of our love, attention and energy on, especially where our physical bodies are concerned. And of course, Mercury rules over the mental plane, rules over our thoughts and information, the way we're communicating, the way we're expressing ourselves. And of course, the moon is our heart space. It's our emotions. It's our unconscious self. So we do have quite a mixture of energies to work with here today. And again, we're in the new moon window still. So we have to expect there to be a little bit of craziness. We're still kind of sitting in the darkness, the dark phase of the moon. There's no illumination in the sky. We won't technically gain a whole lot of traction, a whole lot of clarity until we see that little sliver of a moon reappear in the night sky once again. But that's not going to be today. So the moon is going to sextile Venus. And this again, the moon is still in its Aries energy. So the moon in Aries sextiling with Venus is a beautiful energy because Venus, of course, is in Aquarian energy. When you have fire and air, there's a beautiful thing that happens. We can regulate our inner energy, our ideas, our inspiration, keep it at a balanced tone with equal fire, equal air. And we can definitely see where a full illumination of a new path, a new idea, new wants, needs, and desires are actually coming uh, into our vision, into our realization. However, if there is too much fire, meaning if you're too emotional, too uncertain, too doubtful, too insecure, too forthcoming, too aggressive, and that fire overwrites that air, which is oxygen, think of a campfire, that fire is going to burn itself out. And you're, you know, we're in airy season, we've been talking about energy management, Um, we can definitely get overwhelmed and over emotional if we don't balance the thought process, the logical, practical part of that air energy that comes from that Aquarian energy that Venus is in. And the same token, if there's too much stimulation in our thoughts, in our ideas, jumping around, what do we want? What do we need? What do we deserve? Where do I, you know, need to make some changes, especially in my personal relationships? Uh, If there's too much air element in the intellect, then we are going to just exasperate that fire and that fire can become dangerous. Why? Because we're poking the fire, so to speak. If you add a lot of oxygen to that fire, that fire can get out of control. It can burn the whole damn forest down. This is a balanced situation. We need to be balanced in our thoughts and in our heart space. And the fact that the moon is bumping into Venus, well, Venus is all about our own self-worth. She's all about our relationships, our money matters. And in Aquarius, she's kind of off, kind of, you know, independently trying to figure out who it is that she now uh, wants to be, but mostly identifying her new energy without being attached to some of these people, places and things that we've got disconnected from, detached from, purged from uh, throughout the last couple of months as we've been going through the collective dark night of the soul. So we are coming to some kind of realizations on what it is that we feel that we need in our lives, in our heart space, in our head space, especially coming from the personal relationships that we deem to be of value. There is a realization there. But again, we need to balance our heart with our head. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is going to come up to and conjunct Chiron. Now, if you listen to the new moon in Aries forecast, or you downloaded the moon guide, you would know that Mercury and Chiron were a main contributing factor under this new moon. We had Mercury, the sun, the moon and Chiron in a very, very tight conjunction sitting next to one another, teaming up with one another, really showing us where it is that we can heal Uh, our perspective, our understanding of some of the tough love life lessons of the past, where it is that we can shift our focus, release our mental loop from the blockages, from the challenges that we've been very stuck on. And now Mercury is coming up to sitting next to Chiron. So here's the thing. 
This can go one of two ways. Again, how you choose to manifest the energy is your choice. Mercury being ruler of the mental plane, being in Aries is very quick, very straightforward, always in a hurry to make a decision to dive into something new, very, very hurried, okay? And that can lead to a lot of downfalls because if we're not thinking about things clearly and long-term, which is another downside of Mercury being in Aries, if we're not thinking about the long-term consequences or repercussions of our actions, of our thoughts, of our ideas, of what it is that we're currently expressing, we could get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. Mercury bumping into Chiron, the wounded healer, has the ability to either heal the mental plane, heal in conversation and communications with other people, or create more wounds. What are we going to do about that? We're in Aries energy right now. There's a lot of Aries energy, which means that our egos, our ego identities are a wounded and broken. We're trying to rebuild ourselves from the past pain and trauma that has had a ripple effect on who it is that we now believe ourselves to be. And B, we can continue to create more egoic identity wounds for ourselves if we are acting out of ego, out of shadow out of the impulse, impulsivity that takes over us with all this fire energy. Maybe we're speaking out of turn. Maybe we're projecting our anger and frustration and irritability onto other people. You know, Mercury rules over communication. And first, it's how we're talking to ourselves within our own headspace and heart space. And second, how we release that information out into the world, how we share that information, how we communicate, how we express ourselves. So this could be a a very healing time. This could also really put a huge emphasis on the pain, on the suffering, especially in our mental plane, in our mental narrative, our hurt, our wounds, in our mental plane, how we see things. Are we still in the victim mentality or are we using the pain and suffering that we've gone through to motivate us, inspire us to be better? to make a better, greater change. So the moon goes ahead, still in Aries, squares Pluto. This is actually the last aspect that the moon in Aries is going to make before going void, of course, and moving into Taurus energy. The moon is squaring Pluto. A square is a tension point. It creates an inner conflict. It may even create a little bit of a tension point in our exterior realms in order for us to actually see where the greatest change is needed. Many of us do not make the changes that we need to make within ourselves, within our circumstances until our back is against a wall and we're tired of the pain, of the suffering, of the chaos. Many of us need to be put in a very hard, tough situation in order for us to make a change. This is why the squares, although they are a negative aspect, they create tension, they create conflict, is very much needed in the grand scheme of things because many of us would stay in the same old, same old if we did not have a little bit of pressure applied to us to see where it is that we are tired of certain circumstances, topic themes, and emotions in our lives. The moon, of course, is our emotions, is our unconscious self. Pluto is the great transformer. And the great transformer needs us to make a shift in the way that we look at the tough love life lessons that have been thrown our way, pluck out those silver linings, recognize that those darker situations were divinely scripted in order to illuminate us to our true essence, our true source, our true power. The Plutonian energy needs us to make a shift first on a psychological level, second on an emotional level. When those two are in alignment, our spirit, our soul gets altered. When our spirit, when our soul gets altered and we have an inner transformation, we are then empowered to go ahead and do what it is that we need to do in our physical realms. This Plutonian energy is in Capricorn. This Capricorn energy is about bossing up. It's about karma. It's about the power struggle. It's about stepping up to the roles and responsibilities in our lives, stepping into a place of authority, recognizing where it is that we've been playing victim to our darker circumstances for far too long, and that we actually need to use that as inspiration to motivate us to make the changes that we're very hesitant in making. The sun goes ahead and bumps into Uranus 
And let me just say that the sun, of course, is in Aries. So we're wanting to start fresh. We tend to have our blinders on. We're not even looking in the rear view mirror at the past. We only want to kind of sit in what we have control over in the here and now. We're even a little bit hesitant to think about the future, although we need that for, you know, goalpost sake and, and where it is we want to direct our energy. But the sun being in Aries right now wants us to boss up wants us to make a change, wants us to reinvent ourselves, to rebuild the elements that have fallen apart, fallen away from us. But it is going to require us to have a brand new will, a brand new determination, a brand new passion, a brand new desire, even use the anger and frustration to the best advantage if you need to. You know, a lot of people are really afraid of their shadow selves. People don't really want to dabble in the darkness and we find this in the spiritual community, you know, where this is all fluff of love and light. That's not where the power's at, my friends. The power is using the darker force, emotions, thoughts, and situations in our lives and alchemizing it into light. Which means that, you know, love and light, of course, that would be great, you know, if, if we could all make that vibration happen. But some of us are very rooted in anger and frustration. And you best believe that anger and frustration is some of the most powerful energies that you could use to make a dramatic change in your life. Sometimes that is the only motivating factor. You know, we can only love things so much. But let me tell you, if somebody tells you that you can't, you're going to damn well make sure that you can just to prove a point, right? So you have to understand the power behind some of the not so nice emotions. And as long as you have a grip, you know, over yourself, over your emotions, over your intelligence, there's no reason why you can't use those darker force emotions and thoughts for a greater, grander purpose than letting it destroy you and letting your ego reign. The sun bumps into Uranus in a way that will likely manifest in an outside activation. A situation is going to be disrupted. You're, maybe your plans are disrupted. Maybe somebody comes at you with their truth. Maybe, um, you know, something just doesn't sit right. You've been detoured in your day, right? Many of us are very rigid. We don't know how to go with the flow. And this Uranian energy likes to disrupt things, likes to shock us, likes to kind of throw a curveball at us, throw a wrench in our plans in order to awaken us to what it is that we are overly attached to, where it is that we don't roll, we would rather be dragged, where it is that a situation needs our attention because we are not seeing it for what it is Typically speaking, we are seeing it for what it is that we want it to be. And we are moving into a time, especially in a brand new calendar, where we cannot, we have to align to what is real to us. We cannot continue to pour into people because we see their potential. We cannot continue to, you know, delude ourselves. We have to get really real with what is going on here. And sometimes the universe needs to disrupt your physical realm in order for you to see the different layers and the layers beyond this rosy colored light and fluffy situation that you would prefer to see it as we got to get down to the truth mercury goes ahead and bumps into Merc into uranus as well this only takes place maybe a couple hours after the sun illuminates for us where it is that you know there's another great awakening happening where we have to open our eyes and shift our perspectives to a situation in our physical realms that isn't what we thought it was. Mercury, the lower level intellect ruler with Uranus, the higher level intellect ruler, they're coming together and they're exasperating the previous situation that got activated in our exterior realms. What is it doing? It's probably putting us in a situation where we're going to have a, a very heated debate, a very heated conversation why? Because Mercury rules over the mental plane. So we're seeing something from a different perspective. We're having new information, new details be revealed. It's shifting the way that we're feeling about something within us. It's shifting our thoughts, our ideas about, you know, people, places and things. And because Mercury is in Aries right now, and we're pretty quick to open our mouths and kind of get our truth out, likely we're going to be spitting fire. I'll just warn you, we're going to be spitting fire. This likely has to do with a, a valued relationship that you're now seeing from a different set of eyes because, again, Venus is off 
doing her own thing in Aquarius and recognizes where it is she needs more independence and freedom, where she needs to learn to love herself instead of expecting other people to love her in the way that she should have been loving herself all along. And this Mercury and Uranus energy is really shocking the system because intuitionally we had this insight. Now it's becoming real. It's happening in our physical realm. And now our higher intellect, Uranian energy, and our lower intellect, mercurial energy, now they're like, damn, I can't unknow, I can't unsee, what am I going to do with this, right? So the moon, now in Taurin energy, now we're feeling low, now we're feeling slow, now we just want to stick to what is comfortable, what is old, what is familiar, but can we do that when we are in an uncomfortable situation where we want change, where we've been praying for change and transformation, are we going to be able to do that? Reminder, this Taurin energy likes to stick in the present moment, does not like to think about the past, does not like to think about the future, just wants to stick in the here and now. Is that a bad thing? No, not necessarily, but it can create a little bit of a blockage when we're in this energy that wants to push us forward, that wants to actually make traction, make progress in the path in which we're currently initiating. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, the moon goes ahead and bumps into Mars. Mars is in Aquarian energy. Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, even our anger. The moon in Taurus is in Earth energy. Mars, which is naturally a fire energy, is in Aquarius, which is an air energy. You cannot get any further away in the elemental profile than Earth and air, okay? They're on opposite spectrums. Air wants you to be stuck in your head thinking about the future, Earth energy wants you to be grounded, realistic, dealing with the current circumstances of the now. Now, luckily for us, this is a good aspect. So this is kind of suggesting for us that there is a balance between staying in this present moment, but allowing ourselves to kind of uh, take action in this present moment that will align us with our future vision or future dreams or future goals. Now, let me just remind you, baby steps are still a step. Okay, everybody thinks you got to take this big, huge leap forward. No, baby steps, calculated, logical baby steps are the way to go. Why? Because you get to take one step forward and you get to stand there and you get to kind of say, hmm, okay, yep, this is stable ground. This is good. You know, I'm taking a stock. I'm taking an inventory of, of what this means now, having taken this step forward. Now I'm going to prepare to take another step forward, right? So please don't underestimate baby steps. They're very, very important. Mercury conjuncts, sits next to, teams up with the sun. This is essentially a chasmy. It's when the sun is so close to a planet that it just, it, it blows the energy right off. The energy is not concentrated. We're not able to funnel it. What does this mean for us? It means that our heads literally feel like they're going to pop off. It means that we have 40 million different windows different tabs open in our head. The ideas, the thoughts are coming in, but we can't complete them because we're jumping around. We're unfocused. That fire energy, right, of, of Aries in that mental plane is just burning us out. The sun in Aries wants us to take action, wants us to do something, to move forward, to see the progress. What does this mean? It means that not only are our minds just going to feel like they're exploding, but it could put us in a very fiery conversation and situation where we're just exploding and word vomiting and verbal diarrhea all over the place. Why? Because the sun and Mercury are so freaking close together that we're not thinking clearly, but that doesn't stop our mouths from opening and just letting the non-filtered verbiage just spill out. Now, again, if you are acting as the observer, this could be a good thing. This could be the release that you've been waiting for. This could be the moment where you get to speak your truth and confidence and in clarity. But if you are still not acting as the observer and letting your ego lead, you can trust that you are about to make an absolute shit show for yourself. OK, this is when we are projecting. This is when we are just opening our mouths and letting whatever ever comes out and fall out. We're not even thinking of the repercussions or the consequences. We just want this energy out of our bodies. It's very, very recommended that you act as the observer. It's very hard to do because of this Aries energy. It's all about acting on impulse. And acting on impulse is not good for anyone when we don't consider the long-term effects, repercussions of our actions, of our words. 
the moon goes ahead and bumps into Saturn. Now, here's the thing. Saturn's the Lord of Karma. He's an Aquarian energy showing us where we need to boss up, where we need to develop new roles and responsibilities in our lives, where we need to free ourselves from the restrictions, the obstacles, the challenges that we've been feeling weighted in life, committed to roles and responsibilities that we're no longer in alignment with. Saturn being in this particular Aquarian energy has us very focused on the future because we need to focus on the end goal, the end dream in order to break it up in smaller pieces that we're actually able to do something with in the here and now in order to bridge the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we want to be. This is also emotional and intellectual intelligence. Okay, this is almost like, oh, you've been here before, you should know better. And the moon, of course, and Taurus just wanting to, you know, keep things quiet, keep things grounded, keep things peaceful, stick to the same old, same old, just stay in the present moment. This is a harmonious aspect between the two. But let me tell you, it is also going to feel very weighted. Why? Because we're feeling the weight of the world on our shoulders, the roles and responsibilities that we feel trapped in the life lessons that have been thrown at us, the weight of the karma that we know that we're moving through right now, it can all feel a little bit heavy, a little bit weighted, especially with the moon being in an earth sign. But what this harmonious aspect does is it does kind of show us where it is that we are uncomfortable in our present moment and what the possibility could be if we were able to delete certain roles, certain relationships, certain routines, what we would actually substitute them with. This is an exploration now. This is like a exploratory time on what it is that we actually want, need and desire for ourselves. And although we want to stay grounded in the present moment and keep it real, we do kind of dilly dally. We do kind of dabble in what we could be doing instead of what it is that we're currently doing that isn't feeling so freaking good. <laughs>